Welcome back to the channel, my name is Kushal Mukherjee and I am going to take you to the jungles of central India. This wildlife series is entirely based in the Chandrapur district of Maharashtra. In this episode we will explore a few territories and witness the next generation of Bengal tiger in the making. Before I begin the episode, let me thanks my guide Rutten G, Wag High Homestay for lovely accommodation and arrangements and my friend Satrajit Dutta for lending his 70 to 300 mm lens. The Tadoba Anhari Tiger Reserve is a wildlife sanctuary in Shankarpur district of Maharashtra state in India. It is Maharashtra's oldest and largest national park. Created in 1955. The reserve consists of 577.96 square kilometers of reserved forest and 32.51 square kilometers of protected forest. Tadoba is taken from the name of the god Teru, worshipped by the tribes who live in the dense forests of the Tadoba and Anhari region, while Anhari refers to the Anhari River that meanders through the forest. As we entered the forest, we spotted a herd of Indian gaur in the mud just beside the road. Gaurs primarily are the denizen of evergreen and semi-evergreen forest and moist deciduous forests with open grasslands. Gaur is sighted in major national parks of central India. With summers hitting the jungles and temperature soaring above 45 degrees Celsius, the Hercules gaurs of central India will stroll down to swamps, mud and meadows for water and fresh grass. So it's time for the forest to make way for the bulky beasts. our search for tiger continues and the patience game keeps us awaits we waited on the other side of Telia Lake which comes under the territory of Sonam, a female tiger which has recently given birth to two cubs. The cubs are 45 days old and we are waiting eagerly for the supermom to turn up with her kids. The other prey animals like spotted deer, somber deer, Lungors that are present nearby the lake are continuously giving alarm calls probably because they have sensed the presence of tiger nearby in the bushes. We waited for almost 30 minutes but the tiger refused to turn up. Gradually, the alarm calls dissipated and we didn't see any big cats. Our search for tiger continues, as we move on to Chota Matka's territory, the son of legendary tiger of Tadoba, Matkasar. On our way, we sighted few doles, they are sighted very occasionally in the forests. The dole also known as Indian wild dog is a highly social animal, living in large clans. It is listed as endangered on the IUCN Red List, as populations are decreasing and estimated to comprise fewer than 2,500 mature individuals. Factors contributing to this decline include habitat loss, loss of prey, 
competition with other species. They are mainly nocturnal and sign in nature. The Tadoba Tiger Reserve is divided into three zones, Moharli Range, Tadoba Range and Kolsa Range that are further subdivided into a number of zones and gates which includes Moharli Zone, Kalara Zone, Pungadi and Zari Zone. The entry gates includes Moharli, Kalara, Katwanda, Zari, Agarzari, Deveda, Junona, Belera to name a few. There are two categories of safari gates core gates and buffer gates. The difference between Tadoba buffer zones and Tadoba core zone is that in buffer area animals and the villagers coexist. In this buffer area one can experience interplay of forest area and villagers. Whereas in the core area, no villagers exist inside the core. Only forest exist in the core zone. On day two we explore different sides of Tadoba. We are on the lookout of a new mother and her three cubs. Our naturalist and guide just saw some pug marks and drag marks on the ground. Probably it was the same tigress we were looking for had made the kill. She had dragged the kill in an area which is inaccessible. We may not find them. But we are going to drive around and see what we can get. We were losing our patience. Three safaris had gone by. Without sighting of the big cat. Suddenly, we faced a roadblock. A herd of Indian gowers were crossing the road. It was 6 a.m. in the morning where the gowers were just returning to the jungle from a nearby waterhole. The morning was misty and the sun was just clearing the horizon when we came across the herd of gower. I managed to get some decent shots of the gentle giants cranking up the ISO of my camera. We stumbled upon some fresh pug marks elsewhere. Our naturalist and guide informed us that a bold and an adult dominant male tiger locally known by the name Sumbu has made a whole gaur kill last night. And the kill was lying just beside the lake. Our naturalist and guide further informed that the tiger has feasted on the kill last night and he may again return to the water hole to drink water and cool himself down in the scorching heat of the summer. We rushed to that spot but could only manage to see fresh pug marks and the kill lying by the lake. We waited there for an hour but there was no signs of the big cat. We decided to return back to the same spot in the evening, and will wait for the tiger to show up. We waited eagerly for almost two hours as also the other safari vehicles were doing. And all of a sudden we noticed some movement behind the bushes. Our wait is finally over and our patience paid off, as the elusive beauty gently walked out of the bushes from the opposite bank and came down to the lake to relax. While most cats despise water, tigers love taking baths to help keep themselves cool during the hottest parts of the day. They'll submerge themselves in nearby lakes and streams, soaking for up to an hour, but neck deep only. It's a matter of great pride to witness our national animal living wild and free in close proximity. Wildlife safaris are the best way to explore the magnificence of nature. Safaris take us closer to life in the wilderness to experience adventure, freedom, and a sense of belonging, all at the same time. Deep in the jungles, you would feel detached from the outer world and at the same time, attached to the breathtaking fauna. A sight of the tiger would excite us like it is a child trying to hide from our eyes. But remember, 
the tiger might have seen you many times before you see it once. Finally, on the fourth safari, luck turned our way and we spent one and a half hours with the mighty giant. I got a few decent shots of the tiger in its habitat. Here are the few shots I am sharing with you all. The wooded flatlands are a treat to navigate. The grassy meadows are where the predators hide, and why in the undulating hills curtains the glorious sun behind them, such is the beauty of Tadoba National Park in Chandrapur. Tadoba, apart from other national parks is a unique mixture of habitats. There are 20 different zones, allowing tourists to explore the national park from all corners while reducing the pressure on any particular zone. Each zone here has a different topography, with wooded flatlands, grassy meadows, hilly terrains, and even deep valleys and river beds. High coverage of bamboo thickets and teak with canopies creates the ideal habitat for tigers to roam freely. March to June is the best time to visit the park. The summers in Tadoba can be unforgiving with temperatures touching 45 degrees Celsius which means the smaller channels of water dry up forcing mammals to converge towards larger water bodies. So, the scouting area narrows down naturally. On our way, we spotted a group of somber deer in the water body, quenching their thirst. Somber feed on a wide variety of vegetation, including grasses, foliage, browse, fruit, and water plants, depending on the local habitat. They also consume a great variety of shrubs and trees. When sensing danger, a somber stamps its feet and makes a ringing call known as poking or belling. They are the favorite prey of tigers and Asiatic lions. In India, the somber can comprise up to nearly 60% of the prey selected by the Bengal tiger. The national bird peacock male and female were also not far away from the water body. They seem to quench their thirst in the afternoon, as it is important to keep hydrated all the time. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a monitor lizard shows up. I managed to take some shots of the reptile. Due to their unique morphological features and huge size, monitor lizards may elicit fear among people. But they are far from harmful. 
In fact, humans have caused more harm to these reptiles. Various myths and superstitions surrounding monitor lizards have led them to bear the brunt of issues like human-wildlife conflict and wildlife trafficking. One of the biggest threats to these reptiles is hunting for their skin. The skins of these lizards are used to make drums and their genitals are considered identifiably similar to the Hatha Jodi plant. According to superstition, they are said to bring prosperity and are sold widely across South Asia. People also consider their flesh and eggs as a delicacy and an aphrodisiac. While we were returning from the water body, we encountered a herd of wild boar. They seemed busy foraging on the ground. It was day four, our last day in the jungle and our last safari. We decided to pay a visit to the best zone of Tadoba, Moharli Zone, where the sighting chances are highest. Although, we were fortunate with tiger sighting once, all we want, was a last view of the majestic species of the jungle. As we entered the jungle, we faced a roadblock. This time it was a big group of spotted deer. We took some shots and moved on, as our primary target was to track the pug marks of the tiger and get sight of the elusive beauty for one last time. Our naturalist and guide decides to take us to a nearby water hole beside Pandarpani Lake, where he had seen pug marks of a female tiger, popularly known as Maya, the Queen of Tadoba. Interestingly, there were three dominant male tigers sharing the same territory namely, Bajrung, Bolram, and Mowgli. Suddenly out of nowhere, a bold adult male tiger appears like a bolt from the blue. It was Mowgli. We were so delighted and excited seeing a tiger in the wild at a five-foot distance. I was so mesmerized by the boldness of the king, that I forget to take out my DSLR. Instantly, Mowgli set the stage on fire. He decides to walk with us. He walked with our vehicle, completely neglecting our presence. The show continues for almost an hour, while we were just mere spectators. And just like a celebrity, there was a convoy of safari vehicles, eagerly waiting to catch a glimpse of him. Territory marking is a behavior observed in many animal species, where an individual animal uses various means to communicate and establish ownership of a particular area. This area, known as the animal's territory, is important for various reasons, such as obtaining food, finding a mate, and raising offspring. Animals mark their territory as a means of defending and advertising their ownership of the area. This can involve a range of behaviors such as scent marking, vocalization, visual displays, and physical aggression toward intruders.
By marking their territory, animals are able to establish boundaries and prevent other individuals from encroaching on their resources. This helps to reduce competition for food, mates, and other resources and increases the chance of survival and reproduction. The most common way of territory marking by Bengal tigers is urine spraying in clawing trees. Tigers spray urine on trees, bushes, rocks, or any other objects in their territory to leave their scent. When a Bengal tiger urinates, it emits a pungent odor containing pheromones and other chemicals. Other tigers can detect this fragrance and use it to determine the territory's boundaries and identify the original tiger. Mowgli seemed to be doing the same. Probably marking his territory to attract Maya. Tree clawing or scratching is also an important behavior that helps the Bengal tiger in territory marking. It helps to display its strength and dominance over other tigers. When a tiger scratches a tree with its claws, it leaves behind visible marks that other tigers can see. These marks can serve as a warning to other tigers to stay away from the area, as they indicate that the territory is occupied and defended by a dominant tiger. It often goes by the saying, a day without laughter, is a day washed. To show happiness, tigers squint or close their eyes. This is because losing vision lowers defense, so tigers only purposefully do so when they feel comfortable, safe, and happy.
For our last and final safari, that will conclude my Tiger Country series, a visit to Pandarpani Lake, in the Moharli Zone will be worth remembering. The time we had spent in the jungle, made us realize that we are just a part of the ecosystem. Ecosystems can only flourish in a balanced environment. Mowgli, drifted into the jungles, and just like that, my time in central India had come, to an end. Today, more tigers live in captivity in the world, than in the wild. If you wish to experience a tiger in real life, always vouch for a safari in the wild. This way, both the jungle, and his inhabitants directly benefit and remain protected. We must collectively and maturely understand that some time to show our love, it must be done from a distance, or without any interference at all. With a little understanding, compassion, and support wildlife around the world can live the way they were intended to. Many thanks to the entire team for successfully conducting the wildlife series and believing in my vision to create the wildlife documentary and helping me bring you diverse wildlife stories from different parts of India. I will see you in another series. Till then goodbye.